Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. We'd like to welcome you to Miami Beat, a new television program that is being broadcast from CN Studios here in uh, South Miami. And we'd like to thank Michael and Grant Miller for this opportunity to present this uh, great and innovative new show that will feature uh, everything that's going on in the entertainment industry throughout South Florida. And more importantly, we will have special guests, we'll have artists, and, and talk about activities that are going on here in the South Florida area. As always, I will always bring uh, persons that are, have made a mark here in South Florida. And today we have one excellent uh, new uh, 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 entertainer that has truly made a mark here in South Florida that is an, a legend, if you will, uh, one that I like to call a very good friend that uh, has been uh, entertaining, not just in South Florida, but throughout the world for many, many years. So I'd like to welcome at this time, Carlos Oliva, the founder and the, uh, the director and the singer for Carlos Oliva and the Judge's Nephews. Welcome, Carlos. Thank you, Rene. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm very happy to be in the show and to be the number one, first one here in, in, in the new show. I, I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you. Well, you deserve mm -hmm. being here with us, Carlos, because you have certainly been entertaining us here in South Florida for many, many years. So talk about yourself, please. Tell me, where were you born? When did you come to Miami? And uh, how did you get into the entertainment business? Okay. I was born in Santo Espiritus, a small town in, in Cuba, in the Las Villas province. And uh, I lived there all my life. Uh, until I was a member of the Catholic Youth Association, you know, the, the Juventud Católica Cubana, and uh, they decided to send me out of Cuba uh, to study, uh, to have a scholarship and study. So when I come back to Cuba, soon at that time, hoping uh, we were going to be uh, doing some some more uh, Catholic, uh, you know, proselytism and stuff. And uh, they sent me to Colombia. I went to Colombia in 1961. I was there for six months, and I d decided to come to the United States because my parents were coming, and uh, hoping to waiting for the for the for the scholarship while I was here in Miami, and the scholarship never came. Uh, so I decided I stayed here. I stayed in Miami. And, started working in all different kinds of jobs and things and finally I uh, I went into music you know I loved it the, uh, music was my my favorite thing all since I was a kid I used to play bongos and congas with the radio and I knew all the songs and all that so uh, you know that that made me uh, I became a musician after that well you're you're very well known as a excellent singer but you're also a composer, a writer. Mm -hmm. uh, you have directed television shows. You have created jingles. You have done multiple things. Talk about that a little bit. Please tell us about yes, the history beyond done, that. Yeah, I have done so many things. Uh, we had a, one of the most important things that I, I have done, besides the jingles for the radio and TV shows, I, ha I had a TV show on WPBT for mm -hmm. a while called Sunshine Rhythms, are also called the Miami Sound, and uh, I, was, uh, I was the host of that show for a while, and uh, that was part of my life. But the, the most important thing that, I, that I, uh, I enjoyed very much was when we had the first hit, which was a song called Glorioso San Antonio, uh, that took me out. Uh, all over South America and Latin America. And uh, when I came back, I was a little tired. So I decided to start producing all the bands that uh, had talent and had the, to give them the opportunity to, to see what I had just seen, you know, and, uh, and perform in different countries and all that stuff. So uh, Emilio Stefan was one of my friends at the time, and uh, he had a band, a small band. He was, he was all, at that moment, he was getting Gloria and Mercy, her, her cousin, uh, to be part of his band. 
and uh, we decided to change the name because they were his band used to be uh, the La Miami Latin Boys. I remember. And, uh, yeah. I remember when the Miami Latin Boys were when Emilio was just getting started, and the Miami Latin Boys was uh, very popular, mm -hmm. playing all over yeah. Miami. And they I, were, I remember. They I remember were doing the band. weddings and things like that. So when the two girls joined the band, it couldn't be the boys anymore. So they decided to go with the the Miami Sound Machine. Right. And that's uh, I did. I produced the first three albums for them. And that, you know, send them up, you know, Emilio, very smart uh, businessman. And uh, they, 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 he started, he joined uh, Sony, at that time was CBS Records. CBS Records, correct. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Sony Music signed Gloria Stefan to mm -hmm. a multi-year contract. Absolutely. She skyrocketed. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, aside from that, from them, I did uh, other bands, other groups. Uh, Camilo Valencia, which is now my your, your my musical producer, director yeah. or my my uh, arranger, he had a band called Friends, mm -hmm. and with Tony Gunding and a different <laughs> different guys from Miami, and uh, those guys became the judges' nephews afterwards. When I came back, in so talk about that. Let, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. This is very interesting because as Carlos Oliva comes into the music scene, starts producing, starts singing, and you become very popular. Where did the name the Judges Nephews come from? How did that origi originate? <laughs> okay, uh, when we when I first I was here in Miami, started in the music business, and I went to New York with the Maestro Julio Gutierrez uh, as part of his band before that we, before the Judges Nephews, and. Uh, after I left Julio, I formed the trio, and we we wanted to call it Los Sobrinos, the nephews. But somebody said, uh, "Who's nephews?" You know. So at that time, Sammy Davis Jr. had a uh, uh, was part of a show, Laugh In, and uh, Sammy Davis had a, a, a phrase that he used to go, "Here comes the judge, here comes the judge, here comes <laughs> the judge," and that was popular at that time. So we said, "Let's call it the judge's nephews," you know. And uh, and that became uh, you know the, our name for for forever and you know and I can't change it now it's it's worth a lot of money. <laughs> it's a very catchy name, and yeah, of course yeah. everybody knows the name Carlos Oliva and the judge's nephew uh -huh. is now engraved into all the uh, musical history of uh, yes, not just yes, South Florida yes, but throughout yes, the world. Yes. Everybody knows mm -hmm, knows you by mm -hmm. by Carlos Oliva and the judge's nephews. So. And then you started, originally you started doing mostly Latin music. You were doing uh, 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 quinces and birthday parties and events and, right, and things like right, that. Yeah. But then you started to, you realized that there was an opportunity to do, merge what was our multicultural community here in Miami, and you created what is now known as the Miami Sound. That is correct. Tell me, how did, how yeah. did that come into your mind, and what what brought you to that event? When, when we came, oh, I was in New York. We formed the Judges, Judges Nephews, and uh, we had the opportunity to open a club in Miami Beach called The Forge, a mm -hmm. restaurant, a very fancy place. And uh, I, have to, uh, I, have to, I have to stop you, because <laughs> I remember in the early days, Days of you playing at the forge with the judges' nephews, and I went there. We were a trio, a trio. The it, was a, it was a trio, <laughs> and I was mesmerized by what I was seeing because I walk into the the forge, which is a very elegant and expensive restaurant, uh -huh. to just go to the bar and have a drink, and I see this great group singing and playing <laughs> behind the bar in a stage, a tarima, as you, if you will, in Spanish, a stage that was behind the bar right, that you could small. barely stand, yeah, yeah, and you guys yeah. were standing there, and you were singing, and you were playing. I was mesmerized by, by how wonderful you sounded. That was when I first met you. <laughs> I was, that night, I was with Tom Schutte, who was the drummer for the Rhodes Brothers, who was my roommate at the uh -huh. time, before oh, Tom wow. left to go away and and uh, start playing with Lionel Richie. I and remember all those, the Rhodes uh, Brothers. Yeah. Yes, yes, and yes. so we went there, and we were just, and that's when you and I first met. That was in in the early 70s, if you recall. Wow, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah the early 70s. Uh, we, we When we came to the Forge to open the Forge, uh, Malnik, Al Malnik was the owner, and he had refurbished the whole place, you right. know. And uh, we came to open the Forge, and... Uh, the the uh, we, when when we opened the place, 
the the uh, the guests or the the customers were uh, very American, you know. Mm -hmm. So this was the three Cuban guys coming in, <laughs> you know. So we had to start pleasing them with the American music, but we still had our our feelings for our Cuban music. Mm -hmm. So we started mixing both, you know, both uh, music. English and and Spanish and uh, that became that became uh, a, like a seal like a stamp for us you know people used to like it like to hear the the American songs that were popular at the time Fifth Dimension and all that stuff and uh, with a Latin beat you know and the, our accent was kind of funny that's what uh, drew uh, Connie Stevens to take us in part of her band, of her show mm -hmm. to Las Vegas <clears throat> and all that stuff. And uh, you know, so there's a lot of stories. But the the funny part is that we uh, doing this uh, mixture of uh, Latin and and American music. Uh, we started getting into the the the, the what, what was Miami turning into at the time, you know, the kids were going to the university and they were speaking in English and it's half English, half Spanish, you know. Spanglish. Yeah, you know, and uh, they were looking for the music also, not not just going to an American place to, to, to listen to American music, but uh, the combination of both, you know. So that's and, how you uh, created what is now, uh, what is uh, well known as the fusion of both the Spanish music and the English music, and that became the quote unquote the Miami sound. Uh -huh. Time magazine even wrote about it and said that you yeah. created the Miami uh -huh. sound. Yes, yes, they they uh, baptized me with that name. You know, the creator of the Miami sound, and uh, you know I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud, and I think it it is uh, it is a positive thing for our our generation, our Cubans that came to the United States and we, we were, uh, you know, exposed to the American way of living and music and all that stuff and bringing in our arroz con pollo, our lechon, yuca, our, our culture. The Cuban you know, culture. Yeah, the Cuban culture and our music. And uh, that, was, that, was, that was good, you know, very good. I, like, I, I, I remember it. that uh, you went to, you took uh, Los Sobrinos del West, the judges' nephews, and you went to Las Vegas. What was that experience like at that time? Oof, uh, that experience in Las Vegas. I, I, I didn't know exactly what, what, what it was, you know, at the moment, you know. And now I look back and I, and I go like, wow, we were the first band from Miami that went to Vegas, you know, uh, to, to perform. And uh, I took advantage of it by learning, uh, learning all the things in the, in the industry, you know, uh, working with Connie Stevens in her show. Uh, I was always very attentive to everything that was going on, you know, and uh, Connie loved uh, that, w what we did, you know, she she loved it, and the audiences uh, liked it too, and we were, we were very pleased with it, you know, uh, yeah. Is that pretty much where you felt that that was the opportunity for you to become a writer, a producer, director, and, and help other bands flourish and become very popular throughout the world? The experiences that I got uh, by going to Vegas and traveling all over the place, uh, I, it made me feel like I, I wanted to other bands in Miami uh, to uh, to experience that, you know. And there was nothing was happening in Miami, so I started producing and I started uh, I started my own record label, <clears throat> which was called Common Cause. Always, you know, I was I was a dreamer, you know. And uh, the Common Cause record, uh, I put out a few albums. Uh, as a matter of fact, William Sanchez had just left the Bamban band mm -hmm. in France, <clears throat> and he was in Miami. So I wanted to. I recorded him with his. his he formed a band here, and we recorded a uh, Charanga Sanchez. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I just trying to push all these people that had talent, so the people would know, you know, uh, that they existed. You know, exactly. and sure. Now, and you, I felt <clears throat> you were also very involved in the. Uh, development and production of 
uh, music for television shows such as the Christina Show, Ocurrió Así, mm -hmm. a lot of you know very very popular you know, international shows, and you develop all that music for them. And uh, as a matter of fact, you won BMI. Uh, awarded you uh, an award as, as well for all that music. How did that happen? How did yes, you fuse uh, into... Well, with the help of my good friend Camilo Valencia, which is a great <clears throat> arranger, and he was with me all this time, uh, we both uh, team up and, and produce these things. And uh, the Christina show was an important, an important part of uh, my life. Uh, this was a song, a song that I wrote, uh, this is, <laughs> I wrote a song for Christina's birthday, and when she got the show on Univision, uh, she said, I want my song to be the theme of the, of the show, you know, so she wanted, she wanted that, so we turned it into, you know, the, the theme of the show, and it was very, very, very special, very special. It, but, it certainly was, I mean, it was, uh, it was iconic because it won. Uh, an Emmy Award, and you were it was quoted as saying that Carlos is a symbol of creativity and talent, greatly respected by his own community as well as international. That's why you won that award. Yes, yes, I'm very happy that uh, we did that. Uh, that was for uh, Christina, and there was another <coughs> award. Uh, Ocurrió así. Ocurrió así. That was, was the, another the, show. The news very, show. Very fun. And uh, we, show. We, we did both, and uh, they won you know, BMI, BMI uh, Latin Theme yeah. Awards. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I, Talk about your your involvement in the community. You are truly one of the persons that I highly respect for all the wonderful things you do for this community. You're always there, present whenever there's a there's an event for nonprofit organizations and all that. Talk yeah. about that. And how did you get involved in that? I know that you were one of the founding members of the Kiwanis Club of Little Havana, and that you were one of the original members that organized the Cayo and Absolutely. Carnival Miami events. Talk about that yes. that experience. How that uh, was. That becoming a member of the Kiwanis Club of Little Havana was a very. Uh, a friend, uh, Rafael Piñeiro, brought me in in the club. He says, you got to be a member of this club that we belong. And they, they wanted to do like a concert type of thing downtown Miami. And then at a meeting, they decided to do it like in the street, like a street party. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I was a musician, I was in charge of picking out the bands that were going to play there. And that's how I started. And I, I, the first year was like a three blocks or something like that, or six blocks. And then grew and grew and grew until Calle Ocho became a huge festival. And uh, it I, is today I, the largest Latin festival mm -hmm. in the United States. Uh huh. Yes, yes. And the, the, that was uh, incredible what, what we did with that. And uh, I'm very proud. I did it for, I, I led, uh, booked the bands for about 12 years <clears throat> uh, until, you know, I, I I couldn't do it anymore. So I other remember. people had to go through it, you know, and Rafael Licea, some friends that were in the club, mm -hmm. uh, took over, you know, and I used to, like, uh, advise them how to do it, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it, was, it was fun. It was fun, and I'm very, I'm very glad that uh, that was part of, my 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 aporte, como se dice? Uh, 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 part of your support for uh, the community. My support for the for the Kiwanis and yeah. and yeah. And, I was uh, if, uh, uh, I don't know if you remember, I was also a, a member of the Kiwanis Club of Little Havana. Yeah, yeah. And uh, back in those days, Rafael Licea and uh, you Leslie all Pantin and all those uh -huh. guys. Uh, they uh, appointed me to run the command post. So uh -huh. I was there with the rate walkie-talkies and radios <laughs> calling you on the radio saying, the band did, didn't play on time, Carlos, and I was driving you nuts uh -huh. during the yeah, events all well. the time. But you did a great job coordinating yes, all that yes. music and all of those stages, uh, which was a phenomenal uh, experience. But you're also involved in, in other nonprofit organizations. There's, a, there's, a, a, there's an organization for special needs uh, children that you recently performed at. Talk about that a little bit, because that, that's something that uh, I think is very, the, very close to your heart. Uh, the, 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 my, the Miami... Uh, Miami Power... My, power, power uh, team. My Power Team. Yes, yeah. yes, I am very <clears throat> proud of being in, uh, in that organization. And uh, we just had an, an event the other day mm -hmm. that was uh, very nice. And those kids, you know, they... 
they are beautiful and uh, I, I, I encourage everybody to, to support them you know, mm -hmm. they they do their thing you know really good good yeah. I know that you have been uh, awarded many many awards by almost every city in the city of Miami you've been awarded the, oh, yes. the key to the city of Miami Hialeah etc mm -hmm. but it's something that is very interesting about your career that you have been awarded a star in the Walk of Fame in Little Havana. You're one of the few real true local artists here that have been awarded that. Because uh, along with Celia Cruz and other many international Latin entertainers, there are stars all along that, that, that walk. But you were right. awarded that. How did you feel when? Yes. When oh, they... that was, that was, th there's a little, a, a little uh, something. I, when I was getting out of my car the day I went to, to receive this, you know, to be there with the star, I see Willie Chirino getting out of his car next to mine. And I said, Willie, what are you doing here? <laughs> he said, Carlos, I have to come to share this time with you. You know, this this is very important. So, you know, that was, uh, my start is at the McDonald's on 14th Street. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty safe because it's part of the, uh, the, 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 the little porch of the McDonald's and uh, it doesn't get dirty. <laughs> it's not on the sidewalk. It's a little bit of insight. So I, your your <laughs> iconic your iconic star in the Walk of Fame in Little Havana mm -hmm. is also next to the iconic McDonald's <laughs> in Little Havana. So people That's can right. go and enjoy a great hamburger and then see your star right there on the that's sidewalk. Right. And that, yes, so yes, yes. They, they will never forget you uh, as far as that's concerned. Uh, All those little things. That... Let's talk a little bit about your uh, uh, about about your the fusion of your. Uh, English music with with Spanish music, and maybe we can have Andres play one of your songs, uh, uh, which became very popular as part uh -huh. of your repertoire. And Andres, could you please play uh, a celebration for us and let the audience uh, enjoy uh, this this wonderful song? such an iconic song. Uh, it's amazing that there's not one event that I go to, not one uh, video that I see where, that you are performing in, that that song does not come up. And everybody requests it because it's kind of like 
celebration of your story, celebration of you as a, a wonderful artist that have been in this business, what, now over 50 years, and, uh, and all of the wonderful things that you have created and you have done. So uh, congratulations, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you, you, Rene. Thank you very much. Thank you. That song really, it shows the, uh, the combination of the two cultures, you know, of, of what we talk about, the, the Miami sound. The yeah. fusion of the Miami the, sound, the exactly, yes. because it goes from, from uh, English, a very popular English mm -hmm. song, and immediately goes in, in, not immediately, but somewhere in the middle, it changes into yeah. like a salsa beat, and everybody, you know, gets, all, gets yeah. on their feet and starts to dance. So I that have, is the Miami sound. I have heard other other uh, recordings of the same arrangement the same style the same thing by other bands in Latin America you know they they, they you know they they feel like it you know they like it they like it of course know? they like it i mean what <laughs> what's, what's what's there not to like about a uh, about a song like that that uh, merges uh, both cultures like that and and it excites people and it gets them up on the dance floor etc yeah 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 talk about What's in the future for Carlos Oliva? What are you What are you planning to do? I know you still have your publishing company. You still write music. You're still helping other bands develop. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what your What are your plans for for the near future? Okay. Uh, well, now the music has changed so much. Very you know, much. <clears throat> the industry has changed so much, and uh, there are so many things happening that I am a little a little bit confused. You know about what to do. You know, I'm still writing. I'm still recording things, and. Uh, Hopefully, you know, uh, we can get another hit. I have a, a, a song that was surprisingly a big hit for me, which is Pelotero La Bola. Yeah, that was <laughs> Everybody, <a> some <clears throat> people don't know me as Carlos Oliva. They know me as Pelotero La Bola right? <laughs> because it was. And uh, I wish I could uh, just put out something like that, you mm -hmm. know, uh, for the new generations. How, do, mm -hmm. how has the change in the music and industry affected you? Because it's gone from... You know, originally the the LPs and the the small oh, cas uh, cassettes uh, and the CDs, and now everything is digital. How has that <laughs> affected your your uh, ability to produce music and, and and get it out there to so that people will hear it? It's it's kind of confusing now because when I had my record label, I, I printed vinyl, and then we had cassettes, we had eight tracks, we had reel to reels. You know, all of that is gone. You know, and uh, and now. Uh, now you have to you have to write, record a song and make a video. If you don't make a video, the song is not going to get played anywhere. Right. I, I, you know, <clears throat> it's, it's got to go along with the video, and uh, of course that's more expensive for for uh, for a new artist mm -hmm. to come out. So I don't know the the the, the technology has uh, helped. You know, new artists in a certain way, but there's no, there's no big band sound. There's no, you know, just it's just everything is electronic. Yeah, I don't know. Do you think? <laughs> do you think that the big band sound will ever come back, where you will be able to go to see a concert? And uh, uh, I, I noticed that recently. As a matter of fact, I think it's next week. Uh, the Doobie Brothers are coming to town, mm -hmm. and they're going to be performing. I mean, the original Doobie Brothers, uh -huh. and uh, with Michael McDonald. And uh, do you think that type of music will ever become popular again, or you think it'll all be digital and it'll stay within the electronic industry? Uh, as far as as far as the uh, the names. They will still, you know, be performing with their big bands, like I would do, like I do too, you know, right. with my band, which is nine musicians and all that. But uh, the future, uh, I think, the future is going into more of the technology of the, you know, the yeah, <laughs> you know, the, yeah, the, the, the new technology the era, new styles, yeah, new style, and okay. the lyrics, uh, of course, you know, they're. Lyrics have changed a lot too. I don't want to put them down, you know, publicly. But I don't want to put them down either because they're making a lot of money. <laughs> they uh, they become multi multi millionaires. Uh -huh, so, uh -huh. so, uh, Absolutely, yes. So, Carlos, I, well, once again, I want to thank you for being my first oh, guest, man. and I want to thank our audience for uh, joining us and being the, uh, watching this show, uh, the Miami Beat, which will be uh, air will air uh, every Friday at uh, one p.m. And I also want to. 
let our audience know that next week I'm going to have an artist which is a very good friend of yours, and you like her a lot. You have performed together. Lucy Grau is going to be here oh, in our Lucy, studios with us. Yes, uh, love yeah, her. She's yes. a wonderful artist. She has a great voice and tr a tremendous amount of talent. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm looking forward to that interview. Again, thank you very much. I want to thank everybody for uh, watching our show today, and I want to thank Carlos, and I want to thank Michael and Grant Miller for allowing us this opportunity. Don't forget to tune in every Friday, 1 p.m. We're going to be right here in this studio, and I want to thank our technician, Andres, and I also want to thank a, a, a very good friend of ours by the name of DJ Leo, who created this wonderful logo for us. So, Leo, thank you very much. So, thank you very much. Have a wonderful afternoon. Stay tuned. See you next week.